So in this lab, we will we will learn how to use QuickSight uh, to create some interactive visualizations. So QuickSight is outside of the AWS Educate Classroom. Um, so you will you should have received an email that from uh, my GMU email asking you to join the QuickSight. And the account is i340. So uh, that is because I created this QuickSight account, uh, you know, uh, before this class. So let's click this one to accept the invitation first. And the next, you should type, uh, type your email. So email address, I'm using my Gmail. The account name is RE340, so that is fine. And username will be also your email. So I'm using my Gmail, but you should use your GMU email. And you have to give a password. So you can define your own password here. And I would recommend not using your GMU email, okay? Uh, not using your GMU password. So you should use a different password. Okay, so now let's create an account and a sign in. So now your account is active. And let's continue. Okay, uh, so we need to log out of the educator account here. Okay, uh, so since I already activated my QuickSight account, so I need to find out a login page. So one way is that just Google it. QuickSight login URL. Yeah, sorry, I should uh, sign out of the QuickSight first, uh, the AWS Educate first. So here, that is the QuickSight login URL. Okay, so this is our first time to, uh, to log into QuickSight. So they have this welcome page. So let's close that. So on the left side, uh, so you have folders. So that is a folder that can help you organize your visualizations, your data set. Uh, you can, of course, share the folders with others. And if you do have created the dashboards, so those will be the place that you can see your dashboards, your analysis, and also your data set. So because this is our first time, so uh, we have empty dashboards, analysis, and all analysis, and also data sets. Uh, so let's create a new data set. So let's import the data. So go to new data set. Uh, so this time we're going to load data from uh, AWS RDS, but that is actually also uh, compatible with post GRE circle. So I'm going to choose this one as uh, post circle as a date source. Uh, for the data source name, so you can give it any name, like I'm going to call it demo. And the so information is provided on Canvas. So the connection information is provided on Canvas. So you can just fill in those information from Canvas. And we can valid, um, validate the connection. And you can say, OK, that's, that's great. And let's create our data source. So now we have need to choose a schema. So we should go to the public schema. And we need to choose the house price. OK, the house price data set uh, for, the, uh, for today's lab. Uh, so let's preview our data. So let's go to edit and preview data. So here you can see the hot price table is now loaded. Um, on the left side, you can choose a query mode. So do you want the query directly from the database? Or do you want to import data to the spicy? Okay, uh, so because we have a tiny data set, so let's try to use spicy. And also remember that spicy is not free. Okay, so and on the left side, we have those uh, data types. We have the ID, the price of the house, 
the area, the size of the house, the size of the land, the year that house has been built, the number of bedrooms, uh, bathrooms, and also number of the bedrooms, and also house type. And you can see house type is in a string format. Okay. Uh, so if you like, you can also convert the data into different formats. Uh, you can also exclude those fields, or you can edit the name or descriptions of, of the data set. And this area, you can see that you can preview the tables. So the IDs, the price, the, the size of the house, those are integers. The lot size is decimal. The year house being built is also integer and also number of the bathroom, bedrooms, and also house type. OK. So if you have more data set, you can also join the data from here. So you can add data from different resources and you can join those tables together uh, here. So we will see that one in the next uh, lab. We can also add calculated field. So let's try to do that. So let's see add calculated field. Uh, so here I want to calculate the unit price. So the price per square feet. Okay, because I know that is an important uh, feature that in um, house market. So we can do that in SQL. We can use calculation functions, but in QuickSight, we can just simply define a new field, which equals the price, double click, divide by the area of the house. Okay, so that's pretty simple. And let's save it. Okay. So now you can see we have a new calculated field that is unit price and that is in a decimal. OK, so now it looks everything is fine. Let's save and also visualize our data. OK, uh, so now you can see that the data is now being imported to spicy. So after a few seconds, you can see that all the data are now successfully imported into Spicy. So Spicy will make the queries faster. And right now we have those all the fields and also we have different type of the visualizations. Um, by default, uh, we have an empty sheet. Okay, so you can choose any of those fields. So like if I choose area, that is a single field. Uh, so they will automatically calculate the sum of the area. OK, and if I choose a uh, number of the bedrooms, so that means now I have selected two variables. OK, uh, so you can see here area is on the X and the bedroom is on the Y. So they automatically convert that single number into a scat plot. OK, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so if I uncheck that and let's see, I just click the price and also the house type. So they automatically create um, a bar chart for me. And you can see the X, uh, Y are the house types and the values will be the total of the price. OK, total of the price. Uh, so of course, I can change that one. So for example, I can use average of the price. So now we are looking at average of the price. Uh, you can also sort the data. So if I want to use a descending, OK. And you can also control uh, uh, show as. So I want to show as uh, currencies, OK. So now you can see the format has been changed. Uh, we can also add more variables. OK, uh, so for example, if I also want to see the lot size. Okay, the lot size is very small, so I'll replace that one with lot size. OK, and if you want to add something new, so let's see if I want to drag the price here. OK, so now you can see we have the price and also lot size. OK, uh, we can even give them colors. So for example, if I drag that one, remove that one, remove the 
uh, lot size and so if I try to use ID as a colors okay so each single record now has a color unique color okay uh, we can also change um, the the type of the visualizations, for example, if I switch to this vertical bar chart, okay, and I can also create a box plot or the tree map uh, or even a word cloud, all right, okay, uh, so let's create some real visualizations so um, let's say we want to use a bar chart to show the name of the records of each single house type so to do that so let's say we remove um, all the visualizations so let's see we want to know the number of records in each single house type so let's click the house type and let's go back to the autograph so by default, you can see they, cr they create a bar chart that count of the records by the house type. So that is exactly what we want. Uh, so however, I also want to sort the value. So what I can do is that I can just also drag the house type into values. And you can see I can choose a count. I don't need to count the distinct. Okay, and we can also sort the bar chart now. Okay, so here we can see the most of the house are single family home. Next, let's say we want to create a new visualization. So we go to add and also add visual. So now you can see there is a second visualization here. So on this visualization, we want to see the price change over time. So let's say the unit price change over the time. So I select unit price and also select year the house being built. However, by default, they gave us a scat plot. So let's change that one to a, to a line chart. Okay, and I bring the year the house being built into X. Okay, and and also I also want to sort by the year that house been built with ascending and for the values I want to see the average of the price unit price okay so now you can see that the unit price actually increased in 1985 so I guess that is because there is a single uh, records that is very very high and if you zoom to recent years okay and you can see that the unit price is actually increasing okay in the recent 10 years okay so that is a line chart uh, next let's uh, add another visual uh, so let's say we want to show the price per house type. So we want to see the distribution of the house prices in different house types. So I'm going to click the price and also house type. And you can see by default, they create a, a, a bar chart, but I want to see the statistical distributions. So the best visualization, uh, in my opinion, is a box plot. Okay, so now we have a very nice box plot. So you can see that on average, uh, the single family home have very high selling price, and it also has a very high the maximum values. Okay, and the landlord have relatively lower prices. Okay, which is normal, and also we have the uh, townhouse which is lower than the single family home, but higher than the condo. Uh, next, let's say that we want to see the relationship 
um, between the number of bedrooms and also number of the bathrooms. So we have an assumption that the house with more bathrooms will also have the more bedrooms. Let's see if that's the case. So let's add a visual. So let's select bathroom and also bedrooms. Okay. And now you can see by default we have this uh, uh, scat plot. So, so generally speaking, so we know that uh, when the house has more bathrooms, uh, normally they will have some more bathrooms. Okay. And also let's see the average price. So let's drag the house price to the size and shows average price. Okay. And so now you can see that when the house have more bedrooms and also bathrooms, so the it is a big house, so the average price will also be higher. Okay, so that also makes sense. So that is the scat plot. Okay, so now we have a very nice uh, a three or four visualizations. Um, so I also want to in add interact interactivity. So I select the first one. You can of course change the titles, etc. The count, so for example, count of the house type. Okay. Uh, you can also customize those labels if you like, and also titles of each single sheet. Uh, what I also want to do is that I want to add actions. So if I click actions and I select the first sheet, so because I want to add action to this single sheet and define action i want to use select an action name i call it filter and the selection type i want to use that as a field action the scope is all the fields so i want to enable all the fields actually that is still the single family home the target will be all the other visualizations so all the visualizations so now if i click save so let's see what will happen. So now if I click the single family home, you can see all the other visualization has been updated, have updated because they are all showing uh, the price of the number of bathroom bedrooms of the single family home. OK, so that is easier for you to compare uh, those visualizations for different house types. So if I select condo, Okay, so you can see the trend of the condo. Okay, and also you can see for the condo, so we have uh, fewer bathrooms and also bedrooms. If I look at the townhouse, okay, you can see townhouse is cheaper. Okay, and also land a lot. Okay, and I believe those might be errors. <laughs> Okay, so that is enables the uh, actions. So you can see by adding those um, filters, so that give easier for user to explore the data. Okay, so finally, so when you are happy with your visualizations, we can share this visualization. So let's go to share. Let's share this dashboard. So publish, and you can name it. So. Uh, remember that you share this dashboard with your last name, first name, and also lab number. So this, in my case, it will be my last name, first name, and also lab two. Okay, so by doing that, so I will know that uh, which dashboard belong to who, and also I can give you the grade. Okay, so there are also advanced options. For example, do you want to enable um the hand controls by default on sheet controls and also do you allow the user to download your data set okay and also sort etc so if you don't want the user to download data set you can just uncheck that okay so now let's publish the dashboard 
And here you can also share that one with users. So remember, you share this one with my GMU email. So my GMU email is is this. Okay, and you can say, do you want to give me permission to edit your data or just view your data? So you can just give me give me the permission to view the data. And next, you can click share. Okay. So now you can see this dashboard has not been shared with my GMU email and also with my Gmail. Okay. And my Gmail account is the author and also my GMU email is a viewer. So that's, uh, that's pretty nice. Okay. So that is the dashboard that we created. Uh, so now you can see we have those uh, four visualizations uh, and also that is shared with my uh, GMU email account. So now if I switch to my uh, GMU email account, um, so if I go, you can see I don't have any data set, I don't have any analysis, um, but in my dashboard, I can see the dashboard that is shared with me about three minutes ago. And now if I open it, so I can view it on my uh, side. So you can, you can see how it, you can share this one with other, other people.